I'm Carl Conrad and welcome to the weekly edition of Australian Immigration News. This program is proudly brought to you by Australian Immigration Law Services, the company I founded in Sydney nearly 25 years ago. So much has happened this week that is hard to keep up with it all, so let's get stuck right into it. Just yesterday, the Australian newspaper released a story about how Australia's population had grown an extra 654,000 at about 2.5% in the year to September. This is almost double the pre-pandemic rate in the last 40 years. They also reported that the current international student numbers in Australia had risen to 664,178, which is higher than the pre-pandemic peak in October of 2019 of 652,462. The Reserve Bank of Australia yesterday also released this graph on the percentage of rises in housing prices since February 2020. Adelaide recorded the highest at 50%, Brisbane at 48% and Perth at 42%. It's hard not to associate the increase in population with these numbers. However, the RBA does credit migration for popping up Australia's GDP growth to 1.9%, which is higher than the August figure of 0.9%. Now we just need enough builders and tradespeople to keep up with the demand, but we don't see the Immigration Department assisting on this issue. Still, there are no invitation rounds for the 189 skilled independent visa and the miserable numbers allocated to the states and territories for their sponsored visa programs are not helping either. Let's hope they take some proactive steps as soon as possible. Well, the biggest immigration news this week was actually about the High Court of Australia ruling that people cannot be held in detention indefinitely, even if they may be perceived a risk to the community. The plaintiff that brought this case to the High Court has now been released. The Immigration Minister Andrew Giles says the government was still analysing the decision. He said, We are considering the implications of the judgment carefully and will continue to work with authorities to ensure community safety is upheld. This High Court ruling gives some hope that at last the Department of Home Affairs can be held accountable for their actions. Instead of learning from this decision, the government is using it as a fear campaign to try and make out that these detainees are going to run out into the streets and commit heinous crimes. Of course, the opposition party soon pounced on that. The opposition demanding a swift government response. To protect the Australian community. Paramount in our response will be community safety. The sad part is that it took an extraordinary effort by lawyers of the plaintiff to obtain justice. There must be a better system than this. Surely we should have an independent body that overlooks the behaviour of the Department of Home Affairs. The Prime Minister has been busy in China and the Pacific recently, and as usual on these leadership meetings there are some concessions handed out regarding visas to Australia. First came the announcement that the government will make it easier for Chinese tourists and business people to travel to Australia as the PM was treated as royalty in Beijing. Next came the biggest surprise announcement of all, a special climate change visa to be offered to the islanders of Tavalu, who are sinking in the Pacific due to tidal increases. In fact, all 11,200 of them will be offered permanent residency in Australia, according to a Financial Review article, with 280 visas given out each year. The most significant agreement between Australia and a Pacific Island nation ever. This partnership stands as a beacon of hope. People in Tuvalu are facing peril as climate change looms. The low-lying nation could be all but wiped out by rising seas. Now Australia is offering to resettle up to 280 people from Tuvalu every year under a new visa stream. It has touched our hearts. Fortunately, it is not expected that Australia will have to make the same offer to other larger Pacific Islanders. Well, not just yet, anyway. The Tasmanian government has released information on their invitation rounds on Monday, showing that for the 190 visa, 274 of these 600 places have been used. Still 41 are in the pipeline and another 20 yet to accept the invitation. The registration of interest on hand is 541. For the 491 visa, 197 places have been used of the 600 allocated, with 35 applications still on hand, 11 people 
still needing to decide whether to use their invitations and 403 registration of interest on hand. At least there's been a regular consistency with Tasmania saying they select about 30 people each week who are the most competitive amongst the registration of interest lodge. A new report from Jobs and Skills Australia called the Australian Labour Market for Migrants provides information on the Australian labour market. It is intended to inform recent migrants to Australia, people interested in working in Australia on temporary or permanent basis, and organisations providing services to migrants and potential visa applicants. The report shows that over 12 months to August 2023, employment opportunities and growth varied widely across industries. The largest increases in trend employment occurred in healthcare and social assistance, up by 107,600, manufacturing, up by 77,200, and construction, up by 70,300. The largest decreases in employment occurred in administrative and support services, down by 20 2,200, and we hope the rise of AI hasn't assisted in that. Other services, down by 13,500, and information, media, and telecommunications, down by 10,800. The report also identified the top five study areas for international graduates. Business and management courses attract 34.2% of international students. Next is computer and information systems, 13.5%, engineering at 12%, science and mathematics at 7%, and nursing at 7.3%. Of course, the new growth sector for international students is teacher education. And since this is a fairly new trend, it does not show up in this data yet. The study areas with the highest international graduate employment rates were related to healthcare and social assistance. You can see in this graph here. Medicine at 96.7% employment, psychology at 96.2%, health services and support at 95.3%, nursing at 95%, and social work at 94.3%. While over a third of international graduates studied business and management, this area of study had an employment rate of 91.8%. Similarly, the employment rate was 90% for STEM international graduates, even though a third of international graduates studied STEM. A recent FOI request was made asking the Immigration Department to explain how to understand the visa processing times on their website. The response was fairly brief and in general not very useful, but they did come back with this information which is not published on their website. Visa processing times usually reflect the time it takes to process a complete application. However, the smaller number of complex or incomplete visa applications will take longer, which can distort the time it takes to process the typical application. Median is a much better measure at showing how long it takes to process a typical complete visa application, as the median is not distorted by the complex or incomplete visa applications. So it seems the medium figure is more useful. However, many visa subclasses do not have one, such as the 189, 190, and 491 visas. So we're back to square one. Now, as reported last week, the upcoming changes ahead for the 482 visa holders and their pathway to PR via the 186 visa drew many, many comments. I have attempted to get to them all, and thank you for everyone who sent them in. I can see there is a fair degree of uncertainty out there in how the changes will work, so I've chosen a few of the comments in order to add some more clarity. After getting a 482 visa, do you have to wait the two years for your employer to sponsor you for 186? Or if the employer wants to move you to 186, can it be done sooner? And does it depend on if your occupation is on the short term or medium term skills list? Thanks. Now, only occupations in the medium to long term stream can access the direct entry stream of the 186 visa, where you can get your PR sooner than two years if your sponsor wants to help you earlier. Those who hold the 482 visa in the short term stream will have to hold their visa for two years before they can be sponsored by their employer because they cannot access the direct entry stream. 
Next is from Melek. Hello Carl, firstly thank you for everything you are doing for us. This is just priceless. May I learn what does removing the requirement for nominated occupations for the TRT stream to be assessed against the skilled migration occupation list means? I didn't quite understand it, thanks. Thanks Malik for the feedback about the channel, much appreciated. The change will mean that all people who hold the 482 visa for two years and work for their employer for two years will have access to being sponsored for PR by their employer as long as they meet all of the conditions for the TRT stream of the 186 visa. Whatever the occupation that you were sponsored for in the 482 visa will have to be the same occupation when it comes for the PR application. When the law changes we will make a video about all of these conditions for the TRT stream in the 186 visa. And next is from Omar. Hey Carl, thank you so much for this information. Would you have to work for the same employer for two years, 482 visa, or if I change the employer after the first year, will it still be possible to apply for the new PR pathway? Omar, unfortunately the requirements for the TRT stream will be the same. That is, you'll have to be working for the same employer for the two years. There seems to be no provision to count working periods for previous employers except in cases where the business has been bought by a new employer and the business has remained essentially the same. And we will use Jen Goy's comment for the last one. Hi Carl, we were previously a 482 visa holder but it expired on the 13th of October 22 and needed to move to the 408 visa but still with the same employer and occupation. Will they consider us eligible for the 186 visa? Jen Goy, essentially the 186 visa requirements will remain very similar. One of those is that you will need to hold a 482 visa for at least two years in the last three years before you apply, before applying for the TRT stream. Once all the changes come out, we'll be making a detailed new video about the TRT stream in the 186 visa and cover all the law changes, so stay tuned for that. Well, I think that's enough for this edition, but stay tuned for more updates and fascinating information regarding how the Australian visa system works. Please hit that like icon to support what we do here and if you haven't subscribed already then you know what to do to make sure you won't miss any important changes. If you need help remember we are always here. If you can't wait for appointments using our online system then call the office to see if we can squeeze you in somewhere. As always take care out there and I'll see you next time. So bye for now.